I got a piece of 1095 and two pieces of 410 stainless. Let's make some sand mine. The bars are fused all the way around to seal out oxygen. This is crucial. You don't want any gaps or cracks. Allowing the steel to soak will allow better carbon migration and it'll have better pattern results when etched. Be patient. Just going to do a quick forge wheel. This is how to get that wave look in the blade pattern. Use these dies one time to draw it out. Try to evenly space it. After that, you're going to go to flat dies. Got it to the thickness I want. Now I'm gonna clean it up and start profiling. You don't wanna forge sand my to shape. You will distort the pattern and ruin the look you're going after. Looks like our core is centered pretty good. You wanna to try to keep your core in the center. Pressing it's not so hard. If you're doing it by hand, it's real easy to get that core out of whack. I'm just forging in the tang, drawing it out a little bit. Now I want to get ready to do the rough grind. Normally I grind all of my knives after heat treat, but with sand mine, there's a reason I do the rough grinding before heat treat. And if you've ever made sand mine, the blade split down the center, there's a reason for that. And there's a way to prevent that from happening. For one, we need to rough grind it. And then there's something we'll do right before heat treating. And I'll show you that right after grinding the bevels. First, let's get this center line marked and we'll start grinding. I like to grind a 45 degree bevel down to my center line. This establishes my plunge lines and gets my blade centered. It'll also help from keeping the shear off good abrasive when you put on a new belt to cut your bevel. Okay, we've got the rough grinding done. I've already done the thermal cycle, but I told you I'd go over with what we can do to prevent sand mai from splitting. Now, the reason it'll split is because it's just three layers. It's not like a multi-layer bar where you've got even heat dispersion through the bar. Three layers that are about the same thickness. What happens is the outside cools faster than the core. In other words, your jacket cools faster than the core and the jacket is still heating and expanding and it'll split. 
Now, this may not ever happen to you, but when it does, you're going to want to prevent it next time. You've already done a ton of work, put a bunch of work into a blade. You want to prevent it. This is how you do it. So I do the rough grinding, of course. That eliminates a lot of this jacket. And then we're going to take some refractory satinite and make it into a paste and apply it to the spine, the ricasso, and around the tang area. And that helps keep those three layers at a more uniform cooling rate, at least where you've applied it. And in these thick areas is where you want it. And I hadn't had any problems since I've done that. So I'm gonna make a paste, apply it to the blade, then we're gonna harden it. Just joking. Now I'll do the finish grinding and do the hand sand. I normally mill my guard shoulders, but I figured I'd show you how to do this without a mill. You need a file guide at least with a carbide face, and we're going to take it over to the grind. And go ahead and lay out this guard. I got a piece of 416 stainless steel. Okay, you got the guard laid out, ready to cut the slot. What I like to do is come in on the back side, mill out a larger slot than the width of the tang down and leave about 50 thousandths to do the actual fit up. Then I'll turn it over and cut that slot to dimension. That way when we press it on, we'll get a good fit. After I get the guard slot cut, then I'm gonna take it and do a hot fit technique where we fit it up, and put an impression into this guard. And being it's 416 stainless, it's soft, don't have to do any annealing. It'll leave a good impression, especially if we do the hot fit. 
As you seen when I cut the guard shoulders, I also came in here and filed a relief all the way around, smaller than the width of the actual fit up. That way when we fit our guard, we get a good tight fit. Now after we get the guard fit, I'll go ahead and do the sculpting on it, put it on and we'll start working on the handle. I'll spend a little time sculpting the handle, shaping it. That way you can see how I do it. Some of that may help you. And also how I ping pins. But we're gonna have to do that on the next part. We're out of time. Thank you for watching. I hope you're getting something out of this. I wanna thank my patrons and we're gonna see you on the next one.